Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Jebediah has made it to the surface of Gilly and is going to explore it. Now, the beautiful thing about Gilly is the gravity is so low that reaction wheels pretty much can turn the spacecraft as if it were in zero gravity. So yeah, you can flip yourself up above the surface, not into the air, obviously, because there's no air given the low gravity. But yeah, while up there, you can collect the science that you forgot to in the mad rush, and I'm using finger quotes here, to get down to the surface. But yeah, with a bit of work, you can actually travel between biomes, although it does take a very long time. You see, I've got a three times time acceleration on this, and then I've got another... Uh, uh, four times time acceleration, but I was able to kind of walk like this down the hillside. I started at over 5,000 meters up and uh, tried to move down below 4,000 to try and get myself into a new biome. It does somewhat resemble a manned version of the Phobos missions the Soviets designed in the, the late 80s. Unfortunately, their uh, lander never operated correctly, and we never got to see a grasshopper jumping around on the surface of Phobos. Anyway, we come to a stop, kind of like uh, on the downslope. We're almost kind of skiing down the mountain here. It's more like a snowboard kind of, you know, shredding along on the, the engine there. Uh, it of course, even though you're uh, even though you're moving, you can still collect data as if you're sitting on the surface. Anyway, moving swiftly on, we need to plan our return, and that means that the planet Eve needs to be roughly 35 degrees behind the planet Kerbin. That is the phase angle for a proper minimum energy Hoffman transfer orbit. And, well, I figured I had to eyeball it, and that seemed like a good location. So then the next thing I wanted to do was wait until it was daylight so I could actually depart the surface. Now, I guess if I really cared about my delta V, I could probably get about five or six meters per second off of the surface, which, you know, is it's a significant fraction. It's probably about, you know, five, ten percent of escape velocity from Gilly. Instead, I just light up the rocket motor and it accelerates me to 24, 25 meters per second in the wrong direction. Well, OK, I should have thought about that a little better. So... <laughs> So yeah, I have to move out from the surface of Gilly uh, very, very slowly. It doesn't allow me time acceleration at this altitude. So I have physics time acceleration and Jebediah is just sitting there very patiently. I mean, of course he's patient. He's been out for one year, 300 days practically. I mean, I've said it before and I'll say it again. There should be consequences for taking a poor pilot and sticking them in a pod for that length of time. I think uh, they should quit the space program if you try, once they get back so that you can't benefit from the experience. Anyway, yeah, we uh, get around and I mess up the initial burn because I was in surface rather than orbit mode. But now I get myself a little ejection burn from Gilly heading in the right direction which will, of course, slow my orbital velocity and drop me towards EVE. Now, if you are a new Kerbal player, you may not know about this trick. If you are traveling from one planet to another and you're starting in a very high orbit, it's frequently more efficient to actually drop your initial orbit down very close to the target planet uh, in an elliptical orbit. Don't circularize it. Just bring the periaps down very close. I'm going to bring it to about 100. And then when you're at periaps, then you perform your escape burn. And by doing that, you actually save fuel. It's uh, something called the Oberth effect, which basically says the amount of energy you get uh, is proportional to the velocity you're going at. So if you're traveling fast when you're firing your rocket, you're getting more energy from it. It's like magic. So yeah, at periaps, I perform my burn. I need to bring the velocity up to something like uh, 4,575 or thereabouts. This was a guesstimate. I kind of overdo it just a bit because I realized the escape vector is not in the right direction. And now we can sit for a moment and admire the beautiful purple monster that is Eve. The place you do not want to try to return from because it is incredibly hard to build a rocket to the point of driving people mad. 
Yes, Eve is by far the hardest destination to perform a mission to and from. It's easy to land on, it's very hard to escape. But we didn't land, so escape is easy. We have escaped into interplanetary space, and the next thing I want to do is bring my Apple apps up to the same level as uh, as the planet Kerbin. Now, we are still on an inclined orbit, so again, what I do is I focus on the sun, and try to adjust the orbits till I see the crossing location and then I fire my thrusters along this this vector to basically bring them into alignment. So the, the orbits are now coplanar, which means the only thing that can make these things miss is not being there at the same time. Now, I, I'm ahead of it, but it is now moving faster than me because I'm on an elliptical orbit. So I perform a burn to actually bring my periaps up. That will perhaps delay my departure, but it seems that it's not going to be enough. I fly, I fly through my Apple apps and begin falling back towards the sun and the planet Kerbin is not catching up on me quickly enough. Uh, it, the, I have to get within 80,000 kilometers off it and I'm far too far away. So I begin performing another burn to try and slow my descent so that perhaps the planet Kerbin can catch me. But truthfully, the amount of fuel I have is not sufficient and I have to reload. And so attempt number two followed the same pattern. I had saved it when I was on the eccentric orbit falling down towards the periaps at, uh, of, of EVE and once again I perform my escape burn accelerating up to 4500 and something thereabouts and hoping this time perhaps that I will be a little closer to the target. So yeah, once again, a little below, but what I decide to do to compensate for what happened previously is I push my Apple apps up even higher, hoping that because it's going higher, it's going to spend more time out, out there, and therefore I will have more time out there to have a close encounter with Kerbin, since we, we saw it was behind, so if I spend more time up there, it'll have more time to catch up. Easy, isn't it? It's just a case of kind of refining towards the desired goal here. No instrumentation, just essentially trial and error. And how does this go? Well, we've performed the inclination change. We're a little f outside the orbit, and I can't see where it is right now, but it's out there. And does this work? 13,000, whatever, 13 million. It's lots. Big numbers here falling towards the planet Kerbin. Come on! Come on, you know you want it. You know you want to say hello to the planet Kerbin. Yes! Second attempt! Second attempt, and we have ourselves an encounter with the planet Kerbin, and all I need to do now is make sure I actually land on Kerbin. So, I'm going to find the, the radial vector that pushes me in towards the planet, and then fire along that, more or less. There we go. So firing this way, pushing my engines down, it's going to bring my periaps down. And we want to get it below about 30 kilometers to make sure we get captured. Uh, but 30, yeah, that should do. So there we go. And the only thing that can stop me now is an encounter with the moon. So I'm extra careful about that. Hello, moon. I see you coming around trying to knock me off of my trajectory, but I'm going too fast for you. Ha ha! It's actually pretty impressive. I have a lot of fuel left, relatively speaking. I mean, I'm sure uh, I am sure I could go and do some other missions if I wanted, but really we just wanted to go interplanetary. Gilly is the easiest target because it is next to Eve. Eve is the closest uh, place to go to. It has a relatively large sphere of influence. It has an atmosphere so you can aerobrake, and Gilly has absolutely no gravity, which is why it's the best place to try and aim for. At least if you want a spacecraft that wants to return. If you just want to land a spacecraft on another planet, EVE is really easy because it has thick atmosphere means that anything can land on the surface. In fact, it takes less delta V to put a spacecraft on the surface of EVE than it does to put a spacecraft onto the surface of the moon. It's just the navigation is a whole lot harder. 
Parachute opens, we're falling at around 9 meters per second, and, well, all we need to do is fire the engine just a little to slow the descent down below the magic 6 meters per second or so that these uh, parts like to sustain as an impact. And we are home! We are free! Jebediah has been successful. Working with a shoestring operation, he has travelled to the planet Eve, he has landed on its tiny moon, and he has finally returned victorious to Kerbin. But having spent all over two years in the capsule, I think it's time he had a bath. I think they were telling him something when they made him land in the ocean. And so the results are in. Yeah, I got a bunch of science. I didn't really collect as much science as I needed to. This wasn't a real game. I was just wanting to see if this mission was actually possible. And surprisingly, it was. And just to verify, level one, the space plane hangars, level one, astronaut complex, level one, administration building, level one, vehicle assembly building, one, mission control, one, tracking station, research and development. Everything is level one. And I am Scott Manley. Fly safe.